So my question to both of you is how many joints come directly off of the spine? I'll let you answer that, Mary. <laughs> well, right? well, yeah. Think about that. How many bones are in the spine? Well, 24. So we're looking at we're looking at 48. But then again, the atlas, I, I don't know how to how to articulate right. that, right? So, I know. But but what year? And are then we the in? cranium, and, right? And, and bear, bear with me. Absolutely. But let, let's just make it simple for, for, for people, right? For now, as simple as we can. How many years have we been around and chiropractors have not counted the number of joints that come directly off of the spine mm -hmm. as a source, source, source? of sensory information into the brain. Well, hello everybody, Dr. Ron Oberstein and Dr. Mary Oberstein from Life West, the, uh, the, the presidential spouse and the, and the president coming at you for another edition of our Life by Life West. Today, we've got a really cool guest, um, someone that I've known since he was in school. He's a Life West graduate. He graduated in 2018. And we have Dr. Tim Salties. Tim, great to see you, man. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit about Tim because I met Tim when I was in school. He is one of the most left and right brain balanced people that I've met on the planet, probably. His heart is so huge and he can tap into it. His brain is just firing on, on more cylinders than what's in there. Um, he's a Cairo kid. Uh, his father's a chiropractor in Portugal. He was born in Portugal. Um, he's got an English accent. You'll hear that in a minute. His sister's a chiropractor because, uh, and she practices with her husband, who's a chiropractor. They graduated from the Wales College and they're in the UK. They're over in Cambridge. And Tim was over there and decided to become a chiropractor. And she, they, they said, you're going to Life West. You're not going anywhere else. That's a story you told me a while yeah. back. And um, he came to Life West and uh, ended up finding his soulmate, his beautiful, his beautiful wife, and uh, she's Canadian. She graduated in 2016 from Life West. And uh, her name was Madeline Platt, and it probably still is, but I don't know if she took on your last name. I, I no, don't know. No, it is. Stay the same. There you go. Strong, independent woman. I love it, Dr. Madeline Platt. And and uh, they have a just a phenomenal practice in Calgary, uh, 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 Canada, and Alberta called Connected Chiropractic. I can see it right behind you. Uh, <laughs> and they also have a beautiful child. Uh, 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 a young uh, daughter uh, named Eris, and and they're really just kind of building this life that's so gorgeous. And and Tim, we're gonna jump in and talk about kind of what you're doing. Um, it's I'm I'm really I'm thrilled to have you. When I saw that you're on my schedule, it's like we got gotcha, you, you know, <laughs> kind of deal. So so uh, Mary, I can jump. You can jump. How do you Let want to jump. start? Go. Let me jump. I'll give you a break from talking for a minute. There you go. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, well, so as Ron said, you're a Cairo kid and yeah. I love hearing the stories because I want to ask how your journey got started because a lot of times Cairo kids, everyone just has an assumption of how, why you're a chiropractor mm. and it may be true, but everyone has a different story. So can you get it? Like, did you know you were going to be a chiropractor when you were younger? Like how did that journey start? For the first 21 years of my life, the only thing I knew I was never going to be was a chiropractor. Absolutely. And absolutely was not what I wanted to do just because it was the family trade. Yeah. And, and then um, my sister and brother-in-law that you mentioned earlier, Dr. Ron, you know, they, they really asked me some really important questions. I reflected on them and I just came to realize that I cared about studying the body, how it works, not medicines or surgeries. And I reflected on my values and it was a no brainer. I had to be a chiropractor. What, what path were you on at that time? I was going to be a, a medical doctor. I, w I was applying to medical schools and I wanted to be a neurologist. Wow. Nice. And I know when you were here, I mean, you were doing amazing things when you were here. Your clinical practice was great. But I know that you had a passion at that point for functional neurology, right? And, yeah. uh, and, and I, I remember you went up to Red Deer and, and worked for a very um, renowned doctor up there, you know, who's doing yeah. functional neurology. And so give us a little bit about that journey, how that, how that took place. Yeah, it actually started, uh, you know, 
right at the same time as I met Life West, as my sister and brother-in-law were trying to uh, convince me that chiropractic, what you know, might be the route for me while trying to give me some uh, independence of choice. They told me about functional neurology and I'd never heard of it. And their approach of, um, you know, meeting success with your the level of understanding of how you know the nervous system works really piqued my interest and really um, aligned with, you, you know, my conclusion of I want to know how the body works. I don't care so much about using methods like cutting through surgery or, or ke chemicals through through um, med medication to make a difference. I want to know how the body works. And functional neurology allows me to do that. When I was in Red Deer for two and a half years, I learned under Dr. Norman Hoffman. And, and I feel like that just piqued my, my training. Uh, and, and I'm really propelled that. I love it. I love it. And then we're going to get into what you're doing at Connected. But I, you know, Mary, if you don't mind, I want to, I really want to go into something because I know from our daughters, you know, we've got three daughters that are chiropractors and one graduated yeah. after you, one graduated, you know, just, uh, I think one after you or right around the time. Sydney, you were in school with Sydney. Oh, yeah. Um, at, uh, Morgan graduated in 2015, I believe, and Lauren graduated in 2013. Your generation, I'm going to call you guys all in the same generation, your communication to chiropractic is is exquisite. And Tim, I know you're a phenomenal communicator because I've witnessed you at the college and I've seen, you know, you you deal with all the things that you were involved in at the school when I got here and throughout the time I was here. Um, you, I just want to talk to you about the communication because I think there's ways that your group, you know, communicates chiropractic differently it's all the same thing it's about you know increasing the function of the nervous system having more connection between the brain and you know and the tissue cell uh, you know but in my day and, and mary's day if i could say you know when we first started it was like hard bone on soft nerve you know uh nerve over here you know that kind of thing you know that that's the way that we were communicating and then we started communicating the subluxation and different patterns but we weren't really talking brain health right right Things like that and and i just I want our viewers to know this because I know that you communicate so exquisitely, you know, tell us, you know, how you're communicating and what you're doing with that. Well, well, I um, appreciate what you're saying. I don't know if I can speak on behalf of an entire generation of chiropractors, yes, you. <laughs> but, but the way, you know, the way my brain goes to work. And if we dive into half of what you said at the start um, with my very left brained um, um, ap approach, and so I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> Maybe I also have a bit of a right right brain there too. But it's um, just picking up on clues that the body gives. And, and I think, you know, the diving into functional neurology has given me that opportunity to, to think um, quite analytically, um, which isn't always the most helpful thing, but I, I think in communication, it's been helpful. And, and so functional neurology, you know, it starts with, well, how does any living being work how can they thrive above just working or surviving right and when you understand how a living uh, being a living cell a living tissue can thrive then you start being able to figure out and tease out components of of that there and and so we know that as humans we need our brains thriving and so one of the logical questions is well how does your brain receive information to be able to create outputs right and, and the answer to that is, is the senses and, and, and the interesting thing that, I, that I've uh, found is I feel like there's um, more that we can take advantage of that, that's right at our disposal as, as chiropractors um, to maximize communication with that. And it is through one of the senses, but it's one of the hidden senses. Not many people talk about it. Mm, I love it. I love it, too. Well, and I, I was going to ask you, because that was going to be my first question, too, is like, you know, as chiropractors, when we're explaining, especially to lay people, we have to like... I can't think of another word other than dumb it down. Yeah. Right. I want to hear you. I want to hear you do that. Great. So, so uh, yeah, well, you know, in my ROF, every single time I, I give three reasons as to why um, we care about the bones, about the person's bones, about their bones there. And the third reason I think is, is pertinent to, to this. The first reason is the bones protect the spinal cord and the spinal cord is ex the extension of the brain into the body. And the second reason are the nerves that leave the spine at every level. And those nerves go to all of your organs and we want the spine moving well. So the nerve supply can be as healthy as possible. And the third reason is that your spine is alive. Your spine is an organ itself. Your spine is not just a stack of bricks. Your spine sends information into your brain helping it determine if it can step out of a stress state and into a state of healing. I love it. Wow. 
How did you get it? <laughs> was, I know that was that's like the best explanation I've ever heard. Like again, pretending that I don't know anything about the body. You made it simple yeah. yet like intricate, like like you made it important yet simple. Well, well, and, uh, and not pain based. Yeah, and not pain based. You know, e even though you know, pain can be taken care of, but it's not pain based. It's really about structure equals function. Is, a, is yeah, that's is, right. Is really what's there. So, Tim, when when you have, you know, when you're communicating chiropractic, because I know you're not just doing functional neurology in your office. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. More. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Just share with our audience that kind of what connected chiropractic is about, and then I'll. I'll ask my question. Absolutely. We're, we're a family-based office with uh, tr uh, training and, and experience and a passion for uh, keeping families well. So that definitely includes kids, uh, pediatric care, perinatal care for, for pregnant moms. That's a big drive into the office. And, and from there, when there's opportunities, you know, we also get to dive into uh, functional neurology. Um, and, and we're not attached to any one type of adjusting technique. We uh, are trained in a variety from diversified, Gonstead, instrument-based, um, um, adjusting, SOT, and, and more because uh, we um, valid, We believe that there's a different types of chiropractic that can help different people. And we're happy to be able to be trained in, in, in quite a few types. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and I got my question, but I, but I, I want you to just explain, you know, first of all, how old is Aris? Eris is seven, nearly eight months. Okay. And and explain the name Eris. Yes. Eris <laughs> is the Greek goddess of destruction and strife, which, which sounds quite dark and ominous, but but there's a, another side to it. And the other side of it is that with the destruction comes the opportunity to start and to create anew. And that's where we found a lot of beauty and power. Oh, that is so cool. And did you find that defi definition out after or before? Before. Okay. Before. I, I figured. I figured. Somebody made a joke that they said, they, they, uh, they said, well, you just wait till they're a teenager and you might regret that. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. It'll be the second part when they're a teenager. Yes. Uh, so, so my question to you is this. You know, you've got a family practice. You're taking care of from anywhere from prenatal, perinatal, pregnancy, you know, infants, you know, all that stuff. And then you probably take care of all kinds of neurological things and whatever. So you've got the whole gamut there, right? And even though you have the whole gamut there, your communication to your patients, I mean, obviously we always tailor it, right? Based on whoever's sitting in front of us, what they're, you know, what's going on with them. But you have this amazing ability to, to, to communicate uh, optimal health, you know, op optimal function, right? That kind of thing. And, and, Talk to us about how the brain plays into that, because, you know, the brain is such a huge piece and how it doesn't have to be at your ROF, but how do you bring the brain into the into the pattern when you're talking about the spine and then we talk about the brain? Drop some bombs on that. Well, I, you know, it starts on on on, on day one with practice members. And, and I appreciate, you know, trying to make a distinction between, you know, it doesn't have to be in the practice setting itself, but for us, it's it's integrated with that and i start with that same same explanation that i did on the first day and then i flip turn on its backside and i ha ask the practice member to restate the three things and i push them a little bit i give them a model and, and i have them do that but it, it you know the, the end of the third explanation finishes with the brain and it can't not finish with the brain because you know even if you're in a pain-based model pain is perception uh, uh, of nociception in in the brain and 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 so it all comes back to the brain there in our practice we definitely have uh make use of, of what we call nervous system scans which i know life west uh, you know has it in, in in its clinic you know we we care a lot about hrv so we, so we have measurable ways to be able to to um get across important objective visuals and, and, and good understanding for, for the public th that um, regardless of what you might be feeling, um, and, and even though we can you know and acknowledge that the spine is very structural and from the outside, what chiropractors do might be very structural, there is always a neurological component to it. And, and it's not a belief, it's not, you, you know, just um, if you know and understand anatomy, then, then you can't deny it. It's undeniable, it just is. Right, right. And in that realm, on the science base, right? You know, yeah. 
talk to us about that and how you communicate that because obviously you know you're very philosophical on one hand and then you're very scientific on the other that's that right and left brain right uh how do you how do you portray that like especially with the science around it well if uh if you know if, I, if i'm following the question right and um, what what i think uh, what i'm developing a passion for is communicating a bit of a gap in in the not necessarily the knowledge because everybody know, knows this but i don't think the dots have been connected uh, around it and and so if you ask you know the lay person what what type of doctors are chiropractors what would they say you are a blank doctor what would you guys guess the lay people i don't know if yeah. they guess. i, can I would say them. they would say bone a bone doctor absolutely yeah. right or, and, and what do vitalists think doctor, yeah or a back doctor, but absolutely right, right? Bone, bone. So if we're following this example, and 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 what do vitalistic chiropractors like to call ourselves? Doctors of the nervous system. That's right, nervous system doctors. So you get a bone doctor, you get a nervous system doctor, right? And, and, and the nervous system doctor, I get it, and it's fair, and, and I understand it. But, you know, that there's a lot to it. And, and you know, you, um, you know, medical neurologists might, might, might not love that. Functional neurologists, I have no problem with that. But you know, people who have training in functional neurology might, might, might dive even a level deeper than, than, than chiropractors without functional neurology training into the nervous system. But if you bridge the two, what do we get? The joint. The mm. joint is full of neurology, so much neurology. And, and, and this is not me creating something new. Dan Murphy is all about the joint and a lot, and, and, and a lot right? But but if, if you can picture being in one of Dan Murphy's classes where, you, you know, if, if uh, we're, we're talking to Life West people, I'm sure you know about Dan Murphy. You've probably been in one or more of his classes and you're drawing out, you're drawing joints, right? And, and that powered with, with, for instance, the, um, the you know, the, the hard research that Heidi Havoc is putting out out of New Zealand and, and with all of her colleagues and partners across the world, um, there's just so much potential to help educate the public and other professionals, I believe, in focusing in on the joint. And, and so my proposal, which I don't know if it'll step on people's toes, is to just consider maybe we are joint doctors. And I know it's not the, the sexiest thing or to uh, face value, but, but there's the hard research to back it up. There's the anatomy to know that that is the thing. And, and, and you know, maybe a, a a bit of a, a humorous part here is, you, you know, um, for, for either of you, Dr. Ron or Dr. Mary, when was the last time you adjusted the shaft of a humerus? There's no joint there, but it's a bone, right? You don't adjust the bone, you adjust the joint. Right. And, 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 and so just some, yeah, it may be a different perspective. That's so cool. Cause you're right. That like, as you were speaking about that, like I, you know, how, when Ron talked about how we explain chiropractic and how my kids had to teach me when they came into the practice, they had to teach me how to communicate it differently to yeah. match them about bringing the brain more into it. Right. And you're right. Never talk about the joints. And yet you read all these research articles and a lot of it is all about the joints. And there's the direct connection from the joint to the brain. If you know anatomy, can't right. deny it, not deniable. No. And it's, I feel like it's, it's really not, it's like not talked about. Like, is that, I kind of feel like watching you listening to you speak about it. Is this your passion? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, that's kind of what I what I feel. Yeah, and the other piece is this: you know, when we talk about the vertebral subluxation, right? You know, yeah. there's five different you know components of the subluxation, from pathophysiology to to you know all the different physio physiological components mm -hmm. that are there, right? And one of them is the joint. One of them, it, you know, talks about the mm -hmm. proprioception, mechanoreception, all these things that happen within there. And there's so much that goes on but uh, you know tim i gotta tell you because when you said that i said um, you might be stepping on people's toes you know i felt like something fe went on my big toe you know because, <laughs> because because when i think of a joint i think of something different than a spine you know i'm just teasing right but 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 i'm thinking of you know because because once again we can be thinking about an elbow joint we can be thinking about a about a, yep. about a about a finger joint we can be thinking about yep. the stuff but the truth is there's a way to incorporate all of that together because because really what we access when we correct the subluxation, you know, in the spine is we are working with the joint that's there, right? Yeah. To reposition, you know, yeah. or allow allow the intelligence to rep the intelligence to reposition because we don't do it, right? You know, we put the educated force in and allow that to take place and it's it's a huge piece. 
I would love to add one one quick part here if I can. You can I think add it's, it's, anything it's you want, dude. You so, are like the so, man right now. Right, like talking about brain brain health of this, right? So originally I talked about the senses, right? And, and we all learned the five senses that, that are mostly on our face, right? And, and that, that help the brain understand what output to create at any point in time, right? Eyes, ears, tongue, so on and so forth. And consider how many of each do you have, right? And we have two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, one tongue. And we have one suit of skin, right? The two hidden senses, one is the inner ear, the vestibular system, and the other sense, which is throughout all of the, the big neuro neuroscience textbooks, is the sense of proprioception, which mm -hmm. is joint position sense. Yeah. But we don't, they don't teach us that in school. So my question to both of you is how many joints come directly off of the spine? I'll let you answer that, Mary. <laughs> but seriously, well, I, right? Well, yeah. that. How many bones are in the spine? Well, 24. So we're looking at Correct. we're looking at 48. But then again, the atlas, I, can, I don't know how to how to articulate right. that, right? So, I know. But but what year? And then the in? cranium, and, right? And, and bear bear with me, absolutely. But let let's just make it simple for 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 people, right? For now, as simple as we can. How many years have we been around, and chiropractors have not counted the number of joints that come directly off of the spine mm -hmm. as a source 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 of sensory information into the brain? Remember, you only have two eyes, two ears, you know, one tongue, so on and so forth. How many joints are there? I do have the number. I started counting this in Life West, and I've been revising it over. And in 2020, I um I uh, published a, a, a you know a news article for for the United Chiropractic Association in England. So I was like, I had to commit to a number, but there's no source out there, and I think it's incredible to think of. So um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna number. What's the number? I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a clue. If you're rooted in philosophy, you will go far. And there's no better time to share this information right now than this year. What year was chiropractic founded? 1895. 1895. How old is chiropractic? What chiropractor right now is 120. Five and 23. So 20, 100, 128 years. 127, because we're not okay. quite at the birthday. Yeah, we're not at September. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, 127. That's the number. That's the number, and I have the master list because it sounds it sounds too incredulous. And, How do you and, get and, that out of out of twenty four vertebra? And you know, I mean, that's beautiful, man. I have the master list, and you, you spent want... and you spent the last <laughs> the time at Life West and the last and, seven years yeah. or six years counting. And, and well, in in, tw in twenty twenty, I had to commit because I I you know I had this thought and and I and I I ended up pu publishing it. It's not it's not peer reviewed, but I I, I want to yeah. share as much as possible. So I want to know if I'm wrong, right? Like, but I want that question out there. How many joints are in the come directly off of the spine, so that chiropractors can use that to help others understand mm -hmm. that your brain requires sensory input to create adequate responses. Yeah, yeah. and your spine has at least my opinion 127 sources of sensory input where everything else you only have two of or one of if it's the tongue or the suit of skin 127 so you're counting like the unsinent process uh, everything right absolutely Any, anything where there's drug ah man tim that is so cool That's that really is cool. going to be my next quiz question when i'm yes. out you know speaking with doctors if i'm raffling something off how many joints come off the spine 127. And if they question me on it, I'm going to refer them to your paper. Okay. Great. Perfect. <laughs> You're my source, that, brother. Yeah. You're my source. I was going to say, we might need to print that paper out so that you can actually give it to somebody. Yeah, I think we should. I, think right I, I'll, I, can, I, can send, I can send it to you and I can send yeah, you the list. And again, yeah. I have, you know, I could be wrong. And, and I hope I am because that means more people will be thinking about it. But I have all, you know, well, all the joints in, in, in that, that, that I can think of, all the synovial joints. That attach directly to anywhere uh, off of the spine. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and it's so interesting because someone can be saying, so big deal is 127, but what they're not really getting is that's 127 sources yeah. of exactly. input, right? Exactly right. Into the brain. And and that's where the effectiveness, when Heidi does her research and shows that, you know, cervical spine uh, adjustments, you know, um, open up and, you know, they go to the prefrontal cortex and they show it lighting up and all these things happening, you know, but when you look at the whole spine 
and 127 neurological inputs coming just from there that directly, as I'm reading this, and tell me if I'm yeah. wrong, uh, you know, professor, but, you know, as I'm reading this, those go directly into the nervous yeah. system. Different, and I know that the elbow joint might and the baby yeah. finger joint might, but-, but Also, yeah. we just don't talk about those because those aren't as exciting, right? That's exactly, right. That's exactly. aren't sexy. Dude, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. So I, cool. I know that we're kind of running near the end of our time together. And so I, I have a question. So it's going to be a huge pivot right now, but since we're getting sure. ready to like tie things up. So I love everything you said. How do you tie, and I know you're philosophically strong and philosophically based. How, and just how you explained it, it was very much sciencey. So how do you tie the philosophy? And again, speaking to a lay person, like where does that, how does that come into play when you're, when you're talking about this? Or does it? I, yeah, no, it, it does. And, 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 you know, if I can share it, you know, I, I often um, have a harder time speaking about philosophy than I do the science because of my, my, my inclinations, but it, but it is there. And, and I do in my own way work work it in um because of um with my understanding of science and, and and physics also i always have to try to find some sort of left brain i you know reason but but the philosophy is there and, and and so i think hope is a big deal and one thing that i think is different in, in the communication strategies potentially among generations is you know what i would go to life west and hear of all these stories of all you know some some legendary chiropractors shout out there practice members of patients, you know, to heal. Why isn't everybody healing, right? And, and, and to expect and demand that because they know knew that that was the potential. And maybe now we've backed off of that a little bit because we want to be as polite and as kind as possible. And in that, maybe we we were missing an opportunity to create um, and, 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 um, and, you know, short of saying the word demand, which says that this seems a little scary in this day and age, right? But like there's reason to have hope. We should have that, but we should also be letting our practice members know that because fundamentally our bodies and nervous systems are designed to heal and to work well and to thrive um but if people don't know that that isn't an expectation then um then then they're not going to get it if they're not going to get it from us they're not going to get it from anywhere else and, yeah, and so i i am working in ways to do that yeah and i think tim uh, what i'm getting i'm just going to paraphrase but what, what's coming coming into my nervous system is um giving them permission to heal mm. You know, because <laughs> and, and however that permission comes, but it could be shouting, you got the ability to heal, it's all in you, or it could be you got the ability to heal, you do the healing. And I, I love that. Listen, I got one last question for you, and then we gotta hey. kind of wrap it up. Um, and we could talk forever. We'll get you back on our back on the on the life by life west. But my question to you is this, and I and I and I ask this to you in a very humble manner because I, I know how you study science. I know, you know, your love for chiropractic growing up as a Cairo kid. I know your passion for your family. I just know you as a person and you're very passionate. But I also know that your brain doesn't stop. And we've had, we've had discussions about that many, many years ago. You got a new daughter. You know, you're, you got a new, pra relatively new practice, right? You know, you're doing all these really cool things. And what else are you doing? I, I I just know in there, there's got to be something that you're doing on a hobby side or whatever else on the educational side, anything, anything you're doing. Well, uh, I've actually partnered up with another Life West grad and, and Dr. Sean DeLima Thiel, and we are doing our best to try to create good usable content through a company called Cortical Media. Okay. And what is it post uh, as a pamphlets? Is it what, like yeah, it, it, it's visual educational content, and, and so the primary form right now is that you're right is is uh through posters, educational posters that hopefully are uh revamping the Cairo world a little bit. Can I can I we're going to put the website on the bottom so people can get there, but can I share with you something about about Dr. Sean? He painted a picture for me when I became president, it was a gift from the student council. And, and, and people don't know this, but, 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 but people collect his art and especially around here. And it was just amazing. In fact, I've had doctors in the college come up to me and say, can I please, they're willing to like trade me their firstborn because they literally are doing <laughs> that of this stuff. A phenomenal, phenomenal artist. And not just that, but a, a wonderful human being, a very gentle person who's just got, you know, such such exquisite talent that comes through and you know just beautiful really really connected 
Dude, it, this was yeah. wonderful. I, we so appreciate having you on, and I was just so thrilled to see that you're on our schedule. And um, thank, thank you. I had fun. Thank you. You know, you're just amazing. Please, uh, uh, you know, give our regards to your wife, and and of course, you know, with your daughter. Um, I hope she's in that destructive pattern for a little bit because that's <laughs> that, beautiful, that beautiful that beautiful rebirth and a new will be coming out of it. Um, yeah. But we always end with a couple of questions. I'm gonna let Mary start yeah, uh, with I'll our start. Life by Life West guests, and uh, okay. just you know, just share with us what hits you right from the very beginning. Okay. okay. Knowing what you know now, if you could go go back in time in a time machine, and we can go back to the first day of you in first quarter, and you're gonna tap yourself on the shoulder and you're gonna give yourself some advice, what would you say? I'm going to take half a second to think about that. First mm -hmm. quarter. First quarter. You're just about to start your journey at Life West. And knowing what you know now, what, what advice would you give yourself? I, I would say have fun with it. Have fun with it. It's a fun process. And, and I think it's easy to get caught up in, in, in the little Mile, milestone markers to work towards this, this test and this class and I need this is a prerequisite and and you know first adjusting you know, learning anatomy and, and, and then this is motion palpation just have fun throughout you know there are those, those steps but um take a moment to zoom out and, and and know that you know this is one of the the most intense and most rewarding periods probably of of um of your life to date oh I like that yeah. I like how you said zoom out love it I love it all right I'm doing the second question Tim uh, same question, actually, but now you're speaking to Dr. Tim Salty's just graduated. What are you telling this young doctor who's just ready to go out and change the world? What are you telling him from what you know now? What, 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 what words of wisdom? You know, maybe, maybe not to take a more serious turn, but that one I think comes a little more easier it, it easily is to ask for help. It's okay to ask for, for help. No need to reinvent the wheel. A lot of people have done a lot of really positive, successful things out there and, 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 and take advantage of, of that in a very mindful way. Give credit where credit is due, but ask for help so that you can have time to focus on, on what you care most about. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah. That's beautiful. Wow. I'm not ready to end, but we got to end. Tim. No, Your I, wife is waiting for yeah. you. I know that. And she said yeah. that you had to be there at the top of the hour. We're just hitting it right now. So yeah. got two minutes to be able to wrap this up. Um, Mary, this was incredible. I mean, yeah, was, I learned a lot. It was just great. Um, and, and and listen, thank you, Tim. Thank you for, for spending, you know, the last whatever minutes with us. We just so appreciate having you and I miss you. And I miss seeing you. And I know that we'll see you. The next. I'll be coming up to Alberta pretty soon to, uh, to bring a Life West uh, uh, presidential uh, dinner. So we will see you there, you and your wife and your beautiful daughter. Yes, yeah. yes. But also yeah. thank you to our viewers. Guys, thank you for checking in week after week and and hearing our guests. Uh, you know, Dr. Tim dropped a ton of beautiful, amazing, amazing jewels on us today so you know really i know you'll re-listen i'm gonna re-listen to this re-listen to it uh share it with other people because you're spreading this we're getting out there all over and really it's not about us it's about the message and any kind of communication that we can give to be able to help people learn more about our wonderful profession within our profession and also on the outside so thank you for that we drop these life by life watches every other week the opposite weeks are life leadership lines uh plug into all of them any of them we also have a podcast so get involved on the podcast and you know you can listen to this while you're driving or wherever you're going but we appreciate you and as long as we keep getting the positive feedback that we get Yet. we're going to keep doing these you know for a long time to come so thank you and uh tim thank you again and mary of course thank you i, I love doing these with you and um just to all of our viewers just keep loving those people around you educate them and let them know there's always new ways to educate always new ways to bring information to people uh but make sure that you hug those that are close to you and keep you know spreading the love and let's make this world the best place it can possibly be, which I know we can do through the work that we do. Cool. So until we see you again, between myself and Tim and Mary, we'll bid you adieu and we'll come back at you very, very shortly. Love you. Bye-bye.